up is the uh, Easter Friday, and Easter is, is the Sunday after this. We're going to start a series this evening. I didn't want it to be, sound too negative, but uh, basically it's about Satan's strategies and uh, subtitle, Victory in Jesus, for us, just to be uh, positive about it. And we're going to look at some things, some real basics, um, his targets. He, each week we'll look at it in a different um, area, and, but each week we'll look at his targets, his weapons, his purposes, and our help in God, you know, how, how God uh, uh, defeats that. We're going to look at it in, the, in four people's lives, Eve tonight, and then Job, David, and then Joshua. And it's a different Joshua. It's a, it's a priest named Joshua. And uh, I encourage you to, as we think about these things, to realize we, we fight from victory, not for victory. Christ has already won the victory. Uh, but the, the first characteristic we want to look at tonight is we see that Satan is the deceiver. That's the first one. Uh, he's a deceiver. We shouldn't be surprised when Satan lies to us and tries to trick us. I've given you some of the verses there, John 8. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's just who he is. Uh, Revelation says he's the great dragon. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. There's no exception. There's nobody he doesn't lie to because that's just who he is. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That's part of his, his goal, <clears throat> is to get us away from the truth and the simplicity in Christ. Well, his target is your mind. When we, talk, when we talk about being deceived, the, the main area we're looking at here is the mind. Now we're going to turn to Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 17. Now if you get hot, we can turn on the front cooler. Um, we just have the back one on now. Turn to Ephesians 4, verse uh, 17. You know, our mind is a very important part of us. And if Satan can deceive us in our thinking, in our mind, then he's, um, he's had a big victory in, in his strategy. Ephesians 4, let me start reading verse 17. Quite a few things here that, he, that we can see. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of, of their mind. Satan wants you to have it. Futile thinking. Vanity of the mind. Vanity means empty. He wants your thinking. He, he doesn't mind you thinking as long as it doesn't accomplish anything. <laughs> as long as it's, you know, it's empty and useless and wasted. Uh, in the vanity of their mind. Verse 18. Having the understanding darkened. He, he wants your understanding darkened. Oh, too complicated. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them. Uh, he wants you ignorant about God. Because of the blindness of their heart. He wants you you're blind. He doesn't want you to see. That's why God gives us the light so we can see. Who being past feeling have given the, themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. That's what he wants for us there. He wants our mind to think evil thoughts, wicked thoughts. You know, not, not to respond with the light and life of God. Verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you've heard him, I'm sorry, Doyle, I got, got the notes there. If so be that you've heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What a difference between what God wants for us and what Satan wants. He wants us empty, wasted, defeated. God wants to renew our mind. Verse 24, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, who were members one of another. Be angry and sin not, that not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. You know, when we give in to these things, the wrong thoughts, wrong actions, 
it's like giving the devil a foothold. You know, he's got a, he's got a place, and uh, we don't want that. His target is your mind. He wants to mess up your thinking. Now, why does he want to do that? One of the main reasons is because it's so important in who you are, how you think. Uh, I think I've listed the, the reference there, Proverbs 23, verse 7. You hear, you'll hear various quotations and misquotations of this verse. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And the way we think defines who we are. And it's interesting. You'll hear of people who do strange things, and people say, oh, we didn't know. Well, it's been going on in their mind. You know, people don't just suddenly do something without thinking about it. They've been thinking about it, and then it finally comes out because that's who we are. Um, one of the verses we memorized, K, uh, Proverbs 4.23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What's going to come out of your life? What you're going to produce? It's going to come from your heart, and we'll apply that to our, our mind. Uh, it, it's important. Satan knows it's important how we think. And he wants to corrupt how we think. <laughs> uh, the verse up above, 2 Corinthians 11.3, I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Uh, his target is, is our mind, and he wants to corrupt you. He wants to make life look too hard. I've talked to people recently who, uh, you know, oh, life is so hard, I might as well just kill myself. You know, that's, that's the way the devil wants us to think, just to think about the negative, about the bad. Uh, God says whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are true, you know, all, all those, think on these. There be any virtue in it, and so on. Satan knows it's important, and uh, his, his target is your mind. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but God can help you with that. God can help you with your thinking. His weapon is basically lies. Now, uh, in my notes, I've added, and ignorance. Satan doesn't mind if, if you know a lie as long as you don't know the truth. <laughs> you, you know, they both end up being kind of the same thing. And I mentioned the person that we're going to use tonight is Eve in Genesis chapter 3. Do you remember how Satan, you know, straight away, he begins to lie to her. God has instructed them. Now they, would, they would not have had the written word of God at that time, but scientists believe that they would have had amazing minds. <laughs> they would have been able to remember what God had said. Um, in, uh, and when Satan approached her, Genesis 3, 1, first he questioned God's word. It's a famous statement, Yea, hath God said, Genesis 3, 1. Did God really say that? Then he denied God's word in verse 4. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Oh, you won't die. It doesn't really mean that. How often have you heard people say, Oh, the Bible says that, but it doesn't really mean that. And we probably all do it sometimes we think, like the disciples, Jesus would say something to him. Jesus would say something to them, and they'd go away wondering what he really meant. <laughs> when it was really plain what he'd said. Uh, you know, sometimes we, we treat the Bible like that. Satan wants us to not to believe what God has said. Then he substituted a lie, Genesis 3, 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, the cleverness of, the, of a lie is when it's partly true. You know, the best lie has a little bit of truth in it, and, and this one does too. They, their consciences would be open, but it, it wasn't going to be a blessing. <laughs> uh, you know, can you imagine being without you know, the trouble that sin is, has caused? Uh, how much better it would be? Uh, so he, he substitutes a lie. His weapon is lies and uh, ignorance. But... Be aware, he never presents it as a lie. He doesn't come up and say, now, boy, I got a big whopper for you. <laughs> he presents it as the truth. And he's very persuasive. Um, a couple of, of verses, for instance, Romans 1 and, and verse 25. Uh, 
this is talking about people, it says, who, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who's blessed forever. You know, he doesn't just say, don't worship the, necessarily say, don't worship the creator. He just says, worship the creature. Well, this is good. Worship this. <laughs> he has something else to present. Uh, the verse we read in 2 Corinthians uh, 11.3, well, in 2 Corinthians 11.13, it says, such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now, he doesn't come along saying, oh, I'm wicked, oh, I'm bad, unless that's what you're looking for, and then he might, but uh, he presents himself as an angel of light, having the truth. He has a counterfeit for just about everything. He has counterfeit ministers, you can see there in 2 Corinthians 11, 13. False apostles, uh, they say they're apostles of Christ. Uh, there's false Christians. Uh, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty six 26 talks about in peril amongst false brethren. There's plenty of people who say they're Christians who aren't. Who are actually, some are actually opposing Christ. Uh, there's a false gospel. Galatians 1, 8, he talks about any other gospel. You know, there's only one gospel. Another one's a false one. Uh, there's false righteousness. Uh, the verse I've, I think I've listed there is Romans 10.3. Let me just read it here. It says, They being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So there's people who are presenting something as righteous, but it's not. It's self-righteousness. Uh, there's a false church or false churches, you might say. Uh, he talks in, in Revelation about these different ones. Uh, for instance, Revelation 2.9, who say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> They're Satan's synagogue. Call themselves a church. Uh, of course, there's false doctrine. 1 Timothy 4.1, where he says, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Wow. The more you see, you think, well, you know, we need to be careful. We need to know the truth, don't we? Uh, Satan uses lies and ignorance. Of course, there's a false Christ. There's coming the Antichrist. And uh, he has his target. It's our mind. His weapon is, is lies and ignorance. And his purpose, in one way you could say it's to corrupt you, but it's to make you ignorant of God's will. What's the normal place we go when we're not seeking God's will? Our own will. <laughs> yeah. Look after yourself. Please yourself. You deserve it. You deserve a break today. Um, he attacks God's word because it reveals God's will. Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 40, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. See, God wants us to know his will. In Acts, he said, the God of our fathers hath chosen thee that thou should know his will. Ephesians, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And then in Colossians, he says, we... Do not cease to pray for you and to de desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. God wants us to know his will. Now, he's not playing hide and seek with us. You know, he's, he's written it out. <laughs> he's preserved it and kept it for us. And then he wants his will to control us. Ephesians 6.6, 6, it says, Servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. That's what God wants us to do. And if we don't, that's, that's when we lose out in the joy of Christianity. Now, there's some real blessings to being a Christian. Uh, you know, the struggles we have are when we get away from God's will and the battle of the enemy. And it's a struggle being a Christian because there is an enemy. Uh, but if we're not doing God's will, we won't even enjoy the blessings that are there in Christianity. You know, we're robbed of blessing. Uh, if we're not doing God's will, we, we make bad decisions. We influence others to make bad decisions. You know, think about Eve. Look, Adam, what I've learned. You know, God didn't blame Eve. He did blame Adam. But uh, 
Uh, you know, we, we just we lose the enjoyment of the Christian life when we're not submitted to God's will. And really, if you get down to it, we waste our life. If we're not doing God's will, we're just spinning our wheels. Uh, his purpose is to corrupt us. Well, our defense is the inspired word of God. You just, I, I don't think you could emphasize the word of God too much. And you can't misuse it. <laughs> you can misuse the word of God. Um, when, when Jesus was tempted, he used the word of God. You know, when Satan was, in Matthew chapter 4, Satan was saying, all these things will I give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Jesus quoted scripture. And uh, that's the way we should do it. it it's God's word that, that will help us. It's our defense. In, in Ephesians 6, when he talks about the armor, he's looking at that today. Really, every one of those applies to, to the word of God. Uh, when he talks about Having, having your loins girt about with truth. Well, God's word is truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, his word is what shows us righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of God's word. Taking the shield of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Take the helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's God's word that will, will defend us and, and help us. So here, here's some things that we can do. Number one, we need to know God's word. Now, I don't guess we'll ever know everything about God's word, but uh, we can know, every one of us can know more than we know today. We can keep learning. And uh, that's the beauty of God's word. I've often used that illustration of heart and hand. Uh, you take the letters H-E-A-R-T, and it's a good way to remember some of the things you can do. You need to hear God's word. You need to examine or read it. You need to analyze or study God's word, remember it, think about it, and then apply it. <laughs> you know, get, got, get the whole grip uh, of God's word. Know God's word. Uh, memorize God's word. A word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, it'll help us. It, it's much more likely God will bring something to mind if we've learned it and, and memorized it. I would suggest, we're going through 2 Corinthians on Sunday nights. I think a real good verse for you to learn would be 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Great verse. Yeah. Know God's word, memorize it, meditate on it. We sang the song tonight from Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest, what's the next word? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You know, meditating on God's word is more than just memorizing it. When our children were little, uh, sometimes they would memorize verses that they didn't really understand. <laughs> um, there, there's one it's in Second Timothy, I think, where it says, God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. When our daughter was little, she called that the adventure song. <laughs> uh, you know, they didn't understand it, but as you get understanding, as you meditate on it, you'll, you'll think about it. You'll apply it to life and, and so on. Delight in it. And then as well, use it. You know, it shouldn't just be theory. It applies to every day. It applies to our home, to our school, to you know, all the things that we do. We don't want to be hypocritical. Uh, about God's word. Uh, in Ephesians 6, 14 it, that we read, he talks about you know, putting on the, was it the, the belt of truth? The, I'm not using the right word there, I don't think, but uh, your loins girt about with truth. Uh, in John 17, I think it is, he says, thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. Uh, so we need, to, we need to use God's word. Let me encourage you not to take it out of context. Now, sometimes we can make an application that's, that's different than the primary meaning, but we need to be careful that we don't. Uh, basically, that's what cults do. They just take the Bible and make it say anything. And really, if you take the Bible out of context, you can make it say just about anything. Um, in 2 Corinthians, he says they're to walk by faith, not by sight. We want to believe what God is saying, not what we want to see, not what we want to hear. Uh, major on what's there, what it says. Uh, we, 
I won't name any names or anything, but uh, it had a fellow going through all these different words and numbers and things and how amazing this is. And we've tried to point out to him, the most amazing thing is what it says, not the little things we can, you know, that's kind of like making a, a video game out of God's word. Don't, don't do that. Just read it and believe what it says, not what you impose on it. You know, there's things called numerology and, and different things where people try to, uh, anyway, just, it gets out of hand. The main thing is read what the words say, believe it, and apply it. You know, understand what God is, is saying. Apply it to life. Uh, first characteristic we, we see about Satan is that he's a deceiver. And uh, we, need to, we don't have to be ignorant of that. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. Uh, so guard your heart. You know, live God's word. Know the truth. And uh, Jesus says the truth will make you free. Any comments or questions before we quit on that? So next week we'll look at Job, and you can imagine what the uh, target is there.